Welcome to Wingate series of video tutorials. In this video, I am going to show the NMR questions from GPAT 2012. So let us start with one of the questions from GPAT 2012 on NMR. Both of the CMR and PMR spectra of an unknown compound show four absorption peaks each. Identify the unknown compound. Option A, 1,1-dimethylcyclohexane. Option B, 1,2-dimethylcyclohexane. Option C, 1,3-dimethylcyclohexane. Option D, 1,4-dimethylcyclohexane. So let us start with first of all, what is CMR and PMR? CMR is observed with 13 carbon nuclei and PMR is observed with 1 H or proton nuclei. So let us assume that all the carbons in the given molecules are 13 C carbons. Both CMR and PMR give same number of peaks in most of the cases except when the carbon does not contain any hydrogen. So let us start with one example here. In this given example, the PMR spectra, the number of peaks will be 1. The protons indicated by A are magnetically equivalent and give 1. PMR signal. The CMR spectra for the same molecule will show two peaks. The carbon nuclei indicated by A give one signal and the carbon nuclei indicated by B will give another signal. See here the carbon is not bearing any hydrogen that way it give one more extra peak in the CMR spectra. So let us start with the option A 1,1-dimethylcyclohexane. Here you can observe one of the carbon is not having any hydrogen. So if we observe the PMR spectra for the given molecule, the number of peaks will be 4. The protons indicated by A are present on the side chain and give 1 PMR signal. And the protons indicated by B are ortho to the side chain and give 1 signal. And the protons indicated by C are meta to the side chain and give 1 signal. And the protons indicated by D are para to the side chain and give 1 signal. So total number of PMR signals will be 4. If we observe the CMR spectra for the same molecule, the number of peaks will be 5. Here the carbon nuclei indicated by A are side chain present in the side chain carbon and the what are the carbon indicated by B is carbon attached to the side chain and carbons indicated by C are ortho to the side chain. Similarly, carbons indicated by D are meta to side chain and carbons indicated by E are para to side chain. So total number of CMR signals is 5. So option A is false because it is going to give the different PMR and CMR signals. Now let us go for the option B, which is 1,2-dimethylcyclohexane. So if you observe the PMR spectra, it will give the 4 PMR signals. The protons indicated by A are equivalent and give one signal. And protons indicated by B are attached to the side chain and protons indicated by C are ortho to the side chain and the protons indicated by D are meta to the side chain. So total PMR signals will be 4. And CMR spectra for the same molecule will again show the 4 peaks. The carbon nuclei indicated by A are present in side chain and carbon nuclei indicated by B are attached to the side chain and carbon nuclei indicated by C are ortho to the side chain and carbon nuclei indicated by D are meta to the side chain. So total CMR signals again is 4. So option B is the true answer for the given question where it gives the PMR and CMR signals as 4. Now let us see why the option C and D are false. So option D which is 1,3-dimethylcyclohexane. If we observe the PMR spectra it will give 5 peaks. Protons indicated by A are present in side chain. Protons indicated by B are attached to side chain. Protons indicated by C are ortho to side chain. And protons indicated by D are meta to side chain. Finally, the proton indicated by E is ortho to the side chain but is in between the side chain. Thereby, it gives different NMR signals. So, total number of PMR signals is 5. Now, CMR spectra for the same molecule again show 5 peaks. The carbon nuclei indicated by A are present in side chain. Carbon present indicated by B are attached to side chain. Carbon indicated by C are ortho to side chain. Similarly, carbon indicated by D are meta to side chain. And carbon indicated by E is ortho but in between the side chain. So total number of signals again in the CMR is 5. But a question is on the number of signals but for for CMR and PMR is 4. So that's why option C is again false. 
Now if we go for option D, 1,4 dimethyl cyclohexane. The PMR spectra will show three peaks. The protons indicated by A are present on side chain. Protons indicated by B are attached to side chain. And all the protons indicated by C are ortho and equivalent and give one signal. So total number of signals will be three. For the same molecule, if you see the CMR spectra, the carbon nuclei A indicated by indicated by A are present in side chain, and the carbon nuclei indicated by B are attached to side chain, and all the carbon nuclei which are indicated by C are ortho and equivalent to the side chain. Right. So again, the CMR signals will be three. So the right answer for the given question is one three. Sorry, 1, 2 dimethyl cyclohexane, which gives both PMR spectra and in CMR spectra, the number of peaks is 4. Now let us go for another question that you had 2012. Precisional frequency of a nucleus depends on following quantum of externally applied magnetic field, quantum of electron density present around the nucleus, frequency of the applied electromagnetic radiations, and Electromagnetity of the element. Choose the correct combinations of the statements. P and Q are true, P and R are true, Q and R are true, and P and S are true. So, what is precisional frequency? Precisional frequency is also called as Larmor's frequency. It depends on three factors as it is indicated in the equation. It depends on the applied magnetic field strength, that is P naught, and chemical shape which is indicated by delta and gyromagnetic ratio indicated by gamma. So let us start with the first option P, quantum of the externally applied magnetic field. So this is true as we know that nu is directly proportional to P naught. Option Q, quantum of the electron density present around the nucleus. The quantum of the electron density present around the nucleus will indicate the chemical shift for the nucleus. So that's why this option is also true. Hence, P and Q are true. Now let us go for R and S. Frequency of the applied electromagnetic radiation. So this is called as operating frequency which is variable and it cannot influence the Larmor's frequency. So that's why R is false. Similarly, S. Electronegativity of the element. Electronegativity element is not having any effect on the Larmor's frequency. Actually, the electronegativity of the ads and nuclei will affect the chemical shift, thereby the Larmor frequency. So that's why S is also false. Hence, the right answer is A, where P and Q are true. Thank you and keep watching Wingate series of video tutorials.